Thank you very much. Great applause. Huh, not for me. I wanted to ask you for great applause for our organizers for great agenda today. We have so many advanced topics like end-to-end -to -end encryption, uh, testing web applications, web VR, and me speaking about Swiss Army Knife. But if I learn something during my career in IT and my last experiences with changing flat, never underestimate power of small handy tools. And I hope that I today show you something about it. It was everything set, so just if you want to tell me where this karaoke party is, you have links for my social media. And let's go to the story. So, some time ago, I changed flat. And I was completely terrified when I learned how many tools I had to buy. My dad and my previous roommates always have those huge collections of hammers, screwdrivers and other tools I can't even name in English. And I even went to the shop to buy them as, you know, adult serious person. But later on, when I stand, look at them, see how huge collection of them is it and how little I know about it, I just gave up. Fortunately, later on, I discovered that this small pocket knife I received from my father is completely enough for around 70% of fixes I need at my flat. And for the rest, I'm calling my brother, you know, anyway. So, you know, doesn't matter. Why I'm talking about that? Because I believe that we have very similar situation in web development. We have very great and advanced tools, but very often when we have some bug, or we have to investigate something, all we need is a small pocket knife already hidden in your browser called Chrome DevTools. It's a set of web developer tools directly built in your Chrome browser, and all you need to open it and start doing is visible on the screen. So some clicks or shortcuts, and you will receive a lot, a lot of features uh, without learning about tools, without installing them or paying for them. However, today I want to show you some less known features hidden in this tool. I'm really curious if you know them before this presentation. Please let me about that. And let's go there because I see the timer. So uh, there are not, not a lot of time for speakers uh, at lighting talks. Okay, first thing. Have you ever seen this page? I think so. Yeah, but according to Colorblind Awareness Association, one in 12 men and one in 200 women in the world see them differently because of colorblindness. And for some of them, our web page will look like this, this, or this. However, you don't have to trust me. You can easily emulate how your web page on any web page available in, in the internet will look like for people with different vision deficiencies, just using few steps visible on the screen. So go to more tools, find rendering section, and choose one of the options visible in the dropdown. Thanks to that, you can see how it will look like and experience it on your own eyes. But if you want to not only see it, but find all problems connected, for example, with color contrast ratio, or check which colors are used on your web page, which is extremely useful when we are, for example, um, trying to use brand coloring on our web page, choose another tab called CSS Overview. When you go there, you will receive a report with all data about styling on your web page. And as you can see, we have here some statistics, we have some info about fonts, media queries, but also all colors used on our web page, and what is even better, all contrast issues on our web page. What is nice, when we click on this small color preview, we will receive the whole list of all elements on the web page. Uh, which use this broken color 
And later on, we can find this element, go to this styling section, click on this color picker, and find section called contrast ratio. This small red icon is informing us that contrast ratio is not enough on this element. But voila, there is a magic. When we extend this section, we will see two small buttons. When we click them, Chrome DevTools will propose for us a new text color, which will be uh, fitting those contrast ratio, depending on the type, the double A or three A, and as close to the original one as possible. So you can easily fix problems with contrast ratio on your web page. And this one is one of the most popular problems with accessibility on our web pages. Okay, time for the next thing, animations. And yeah, we had some cats on the previous presentation, so time for some dogs. Huh? Okay. Well, yes, it works. So let's meet Ginger. And Ginger is showing us some very complicated, as you may see, animations. But what I want to show you is this animations tab. What we can do here, we can slow down our animations just to preview them. We can make our uh, cycles shorter or, come on, longer to preview how it will behave. What's more, we can replay all the animations just to play with them. And of course, we can click open styling tab and play with CSSs on the web page. What's more, we can also add delay. So our animation will start a little later. Super useful stuff just to playing with animations and seeing what's happening there. How to go there? It's on the next slide. Yeah, again, more tools, animation stuff, and later on, just reload your web page and you will see all options to perform animations audit on your web page. And the last thing I want to show you is recording user flows. And if you ever receive this box where reproduce steps like click, fulfill, hold the form, uh, find free fields, add something in the end, clap your hands, and so on, so on, so on, you will like it. Because it helps us, as the name is displaying, just record user flow, uh, replay it, slow down, debug, and so on. How to go there? Again, more tools, recorder tab, start new recording, and later on, we can add our name, we can add selector attribute, but it's not necessarily, and start our recording. I recorded it a little earlier, because as I said, we don't have a lot of time here. Uh, but when we record this user flow, we will see this timeline on the right side, and we can see each step recorded during the uh, way. We can, of course, replay the whole flow and check if everything happening uh, the way we predicted. We can also adjust it. For example, here, I want to change the value from second, let's say, to code and replay it so we can uh, easily reproduce our bug and check if our fixes are helping with that. We can also slow down a little our testing. We can add some throttling. We can, what is extremely nice, open this flow in performance panel where we can focus on how to improve it and understand what is the biggest blocker in our way. I'm not going into details in 30 seconds about it, but I believe you already seen this uh, tab. And what is also nice in this uh, user recording tab, we can export it as a JSON file or Papeter script and share with someone else. Time is ending and yeah, we are, I know that everyone is waiting for the break. So I just wanna leave you with one very important thought. Before you invest your time and money in advanced tools, check if the pocket knife you already have in your browser isn't enough for your needs. 
If you want to learn more about Chrome DevTools, I strongly recommend those tools. And if you want to stay in touch with me, here you have my social media links. Thank you.